Hey everybody, it's Jeremy from Transition TV out of West Michigan. Just want to uh, do a little test today. So I install antennas professionally. Been doing it for a while now. And I've always wondered for quite a while. Nothing about that antenna. I actually replaced that. That's leftovers. But I've wondered for quite a while if aluminum, if these aluminum elements actually work better than copper elements. Now I know that antenna manufacturers use aluminum not because of its conductivity being better than than uh, copper because compared to silver, silver being 100, uh, the scale for copper is like I think the number is like 94, 95, and the scale for aluminum's like 56, if I remember, something like that. So it's not that aluminum is more conductive, and with radio frequencies, I'm not even sure if it makes a difference or not. That's what I'm going to test today. I got to straighten these out a little bit, but I bought a coil of 3/8 copper. It's pretty close to this same stuff that I use here, and I'm going to see if it's any better. Or if it's any worse, we're gonna run some tests. Okay, so I just hooked up these aluminum elements. Got it hooked up to the signal meter. For radio frequency channel 13, I don't know if you can see that. Right there, which is channel 200 and 13 megahertz it's fluctuating but I've got this antenna on the ground with traffic driving by but you can see that we are one two three almost to the fourth bar over out of six for that channel with aluminum uh, at peak so it's averaging about three and a half which is minus 12.5 decibels. I'm going to go ahead and switch over to copper. Maximum is minus 10.6. I'm going to switch over to decibel or uh, switch over to uh, copper and see the result. Compare the two. Okay, so I just put the copper elements on. They're not the straightest, but in this case, it doesn't matter because I'm just doing a test. I won't use this for a customer, obviously. I just want to know if copper produces a better signal result than aluminum based on data sheet information, having higher conductivity. And so I've got them hooked up exactly the same spot on exactly the same transformer in exactly the same way that I had the aluminum hooked up and for comparison it's actually slightly less right now minus 13.3 decibel millivolts maximum was minus 11.7 so uh, copper elements don't seem to produce any better results than aluminum and manufacturers probably don't use them because of that reason and they also wouldn't use them because they're more expensive and they're heavier these things actually have quite a bit of weight to it especially compared to aluminum and I'm just using this boom because it's an extra one that I have left over but it doesn't matter because it's just for testing. But everything else is configured exactly the same way as the aluminum ones. I just switched these out after I paused the video. I'm not seeing any better result with copper elements. I should also note that the length of these elements is important to the frequency that I'm testing too. And uh, um, there's a rating for each frequency. You only need, for VHF, you only need two elements.
for every channel. That's why when you look at a rooftop antenna and you see something like this, you see all those different elements. Well, that's because it's accommodating to all the different frequencies. But if you only wanted one channel, you only need two elements and they have to be cut specific to the length. And just for kicks and giggles, I guess I'll hook up my my uh, nano VNA meter and we'll check the SWR on that and see if it matches to that frequency that I'm using. Not that it matters for, for my test, but for a customer I use it if they have trouble with the station and I try to optimize antennas with it. So. I'll hook that SWR meter up and see how it looks for this 213 megahertz frequency that we just checked. So I got the uh, SWR meter hooked up to this, these two elements, which is kind of like a homemade antenna. I don't know if you can see that. Can't even see that at all. It's just so bright out here. So on this chart, there's two dips right there, and we're, we want it to dip. We want this value right there where it says 2.4165. We want it to be as close to 1.0 as possible. That's the SWR. And that means that this antenna, the length of the elements match the frequency that we're trying to go for. And we want these dips that you see right there to be for 213 megahertz. However, the way this copper is working, it's not even a good VHF antenna at all. There's nothing there on the SWR meter that falls below 300 megahertz, which is VHF. It's act acting like a UHF antenna. It's probably because of the copper because the length is right, but the uh, SWR value is horrible. So this would be better if we had a channel that came in at 537 megahertz or this other one down here. Let's get down to that. I'm just going to move the marker over. There it is. That yellow marker drops down to the bottom. It's actually what we want. So this antenna is closer optimized at 1.6 is closer to 1 it's closer optimized for channel 623 megahertz which I forget what channel radio frequency that is RF channel 50 something 60 something I can't remember but that's the uh, that's the channels actually that the uh, LTE cell phone companies are using because FCC sold those upper UHF channels over to the cell phone companies and they get to use those now but so this would actually work pretty good for a cell phone antenna but it's not going to work good at all for a TV antenna copper doesn't work good as good as as aluminum surprisingly and it kind of messes up the function of antennas and how they're designed to work I don't know why that is, but it probably has a lot to do with resonating. And when you resonate a frequency, all you're doing is you're matching your antenna resonation with your, with your, uh, if I said that right, with your frequency that you're trying to tune in. And if it doesn't match, if it doesn't resonate, then it's not an optimized antenna. You could get lucky if you're close enough and still get the signal in, but. In West Michigan, the signals for most people are really difficult to achieve because we've got, literally, we got trees everywhere. So if an antenna claims that it can work 70 miles, that might be true if it's 32 feet in the air on flat ground and the, and, and the uh, broadcaster is pushing out 50,000 watts of power. But here in West Michigan, even the 500,000 watt UHF channels still only work about 60 miles away if you're up in the air overcoming some of these trees so people need a lot of help here and I always test things out to see how I can help them better but copper is not going to do it I wouldn't wouldn't make an antenna out of copper at all because 
The other thing too is even if you did, this is going to corrode. You could paint it. It doesn't matter. Radio frequencies go right through paint. You could paint it black or some people polyurethane them. Ham radio operators like to use copper. But I don't see why because it's it doesn't produce a better result. It's heavier. It corrodes. And uh, it's more expensive. So aluminum it still is. Aluminum is king when it comes to antennas.